Hey guys, Anthony Jones with the Top Gun Jumbo, and this is my DIY paint job on a Jumbo video. In this video, I'm going to show you exactly what I used on the exterior and interior spray job of my Top Gun Jumbo. Um, I'm going to show you the product, and then I'm going to show you how exactly I prepped the boat and got it ready for paint. I'm also going to go over my framing and my casting deck and my hatch system and show you the uh, enamel that I used on that. And lastly, in this video, I'm going to do a step-by-step -step demonstration of how I actually apply paint to a, a inside of a hatch. So stay tuned, guys. Thanks for watching. Hopefully, this will clear some things up and help some people. And as always, may your tiny boat bills be great and enjoy. There she is. It's a very light gray. It's almost an eggshell finish. I'm going to walk you around it. I sprayed this boat, I prepped the boat and sprayed it, and I'm going to show you in a second exactly what I used. For those that are new to the channel, my Top Gun John boat is inspired by the World War II Flying Tigers. That's why it's got the shark's teeth. It's kind of a military themed boat. And uh, I really like how it turned out with the paint schematics. And I've got a lot of questions about it. So that's what this is about. Hopefully we could clear some things out and help some people. I'm going to show you exactly what I used, guys. I did go ahead and remove out my front floor system and my side panels here to show you the inside. I'm not complete on final wiring, so guys, all this will be in some kind of a PVC or a protective loom when it's all said and done. So please ignore the wiring. Um, but I, what I wanted to show you is that everything in this boat, inside and out, has been sprayed. Um, so the first thing I did was I took sandpaper and I took my DeWalt sander. And I used a palm sander on this project. And I used a... The wall, and I used 150 grit, I believe. 150 grit sanding sheets. I like the sanding sheets because uh, they're cheaper than buying just the individuals. So you, you take the sheet and you cut it up yourself, and you get four out of each sheet. And normally it comes with uh, four sheets, so it's more economical. But uh, man, what I did was I took this sander. And I just beat this boat down. I put a mask on and uh, I took it out in the yard and I flipped it upside down on some saw horses and I just sanded my life away. I think I sanded for a whole weekend to be honest with you. But uh, that, that palm sander is good because it can, uh, the size of it for these boats, it's really nice. It could get in here and then you could angle it on the rib and get all the way around the rib and you could get all of this. You could get right up to these rivets. And you could get in here. Heck, you could even get around here if you do this with it. So you could get a lot of the boat. Um, I'll show you in a second the paint that I used. It's going to be different for each scenario. So my scenario on this boat was the paint was really faded and it was missing in some spots. But where there was still paint, that paint was actually still adhering. So the paint that I used per manufacturer specifications it actually says that you would just need to scuff that surface of that existing paint or if the existing paint were chipping off and flaking off then you would have to remove it altogether but in my circumstance on this boat the original paint was still adhering to the aluminum of the boat so I was able to just sand and if I went to bare metal that was fine and if I just sanded the paint and it stuck that was fine too and then I was able to coat everything without primer and as far as this part of the boat is concerned the interior what i did was i used that same palm sander everywhere i could get but the inside was a lot more difficult because there's a lot more nooks and crannies and contours so i would just take that sandpaper and i would fold it up like so and i would just get in here and hand sand everything that had a rib or a channel and uh, it was very time consuming but i got it all done and it sprayed and stuck really, really nicely. Um, 
I believe I cleaned everything with a mineral spirit, but I'm going to show you the paint I use and it, it'll have all the full instructions on there of how to apply it, um, the coatings, the thinning, and then how to clean the surface and all that. So you don't have to take my word for it. If you, if you order this paint, it'll be very clear on the can as to what to do. This is what I painted my boat in. This is Seahawk Alumahawk aluminum boat paint and the color is aluminum gray guys what uh what turned me on to this product and it's probably just me but i like the fact that this says that it's aluminum boat paint um that tells me this is this stuff is or so they say formulated for aluminum boats um it's got a john boat on the picture um it's supposedly made for this application what I also liked about this is um, a big selling point was no primer necessary. Um, you could paint straight up aluminum or it says on the back, if the paint that's on the boat is staying on the boat that you're going to paint and it's good base coat, you could sand it. So this stuff has something to bind to and then you could spray it. So it wasn't totally necessary for me to remove all the existing paint. I'll also say my existing paint job on my boat was a factory paint job. If you're painting over a rattle can spray job, or if you're painting over an oil-based paint job or something of the DIY nature, you may want to go ahead and remove all that existing paint. But from a factory base coat standpoint, this stuff grips great to factory paint that is still bonding to the original aluminum. So that to me was a selling point. Um, it is, uh, I guess, quite pricey. I think it, I paid, don't quote me on this because it's been a while since I bought it and I was too lazy to Google before I did this video. I think it was like 80 bucks a quart or 70 bucks a quart. Um, I used, I think, like two and a half quarts on this whole boat and I sprayed heavy, multiple coats, uh, inside and outside because at the time I had no idea I was going to do all of this work to it. So I sprayed everything, which honestly got covered up so it's kind of unfortunate but it's under there but uh this is what i used this is probably the biggest question i get besides framing i get all the time what paint did you use to paint your boat well guys this is it i can't attest to how well it lasts or how long it lasts because the boat is yet to be on the water but i beat the hell out of it with tools i rub up against it all the, all the time i've moved it back and forth and trailered it as we were building our house and moving i haven't had any issues so um it laid down really nicely and i sprayed it i'm going to show you the gun i sprayed it with i sprayed it with a really really cheapo gun and um it, it turned out nice man i'm i'm real happy with it so as far as what it looks like now i could tell you i like the product long term can't tell you can't give you a review maybe i will one day but as for now that's what i used so let's see uh let me show you what i sprayed it with and this is the old husky it's a siphon fed spray gun the only downside of this thing guys is you got to spray it pretty much at this angle if you start to turn it or try to spray like this, it just don't do it i mean it's not gravity fed i bought this gun um i bought this gun just to paint this boat this gun was the cheapest gun I think Home Depot sells. I was 40 or 50 bucks, and um, I only have used it for spraying this boat. That's the only thing I ever used it for, but I just figured I'd show you. Um, it turned out well, so I got 50 bucks in a paint gun to spray it. Uh, I think it says 45 PSI. Let me see. I thought I said, saw somewhere on there 45 PSI max. Oh, yeah, right there. Duh. 45 PSI max. So set your air compressor to that and uh, spray away. Turned out well for me. Um, also with this, you're going to need to, it says on the instructions somewhere on the back, you're going to need to cut it with MEK. So let me show you what that is. So here's the methyl ethyl. Uh, we're just going to go with MEK. Here's your MEK. I got this at Home Depot. Um, you could, I'm sure you can get it at Lowe's or any kind of paint supply. Uh, so there's the aluminum hawk. You thin it with this. It says on here, uh, where's it at? Thinning. Thin if necessary with MEK, but in hot weather, 5 to 10% may be added to maintain a wet edge. I'm just going to go ahead and throw it out there, guys. I, I thinned it 20%. So <laughs> um, I, I thinned it 5% and it didn't spray very great. I added a little bit more and I ended up when I, I just went nuts. I said, you know what? I'm just going to go do a four to one ratio. One of this, four parts this, 
throw her in there and she sprayed out real nice and leveled out real wet and flat for the most part uh if you got a better gun than that probably can do a little bit better job but i'm happy with what i got into it so uh that's all you need for the exterior and interior of the paint let's talk about what i did my hatches and my framing in okay so this is up front i'm gonna see if we could get under here and i could show you so that's some framing some panels battery box framing and dividers okay and uh if you go over to the one hatch i can get to you'll see framing there's that divider okay see that's and then here's the underside of a hatch it's just rust-oleum oil-based enamel and gloss smoke gray and then i'll show you back here gloss smoke gray and then all of this is molded in it's all combination of wood and fiberglass resin and bondo um but uh this is what i used now granted this is a gloss sunrise red I'm out of gloss smoke gray. The boat's done, and uh, I had this left over from doing the shark teeth. I did do the shark teeth up front in the oil base because I hand painted it. It's not a graphic. I um, have a video on that. I'm sure most of you have seen, but uh, yeah, that's uh, I just, when I got into this, man, Michael Lopez, Fire Ant Fishing, that's what these guys were using, and I just went with it, and uh, yeah, I, it hadn't failed anybody, so uh why well, fix it if it's not broken the only thing that i do do that's a little different and uh you can probably check it out on one of my last videos is i do coat all of my wooden hatches and um and fiberglass resin uh to water water seal them um even more so than just applying the exterior uh oil-based enamel so um what i do do what i do do <laughs> what i do do with this is i i like to use a medium density gosh man i'm really on it today high density foam roller okay these are four inch doors and cabinets uh, i'm going to show you a little bit more about this in a minute when we do that step by step on that hatch but uh i, I love using these they they hold the paint they roll the paint the paint levels out nicely it's just a foam roller that's how i paint my hatches and they're compact enough in the four inch uh, size that you could get them in here and get a lot of stuff done so with a little el cheapo brush you could hit your corners and all of your flat stuff you could hit it with uh what i like to call a zippy roller um in that four inch uh high density foam roller so uh I think that's it with as far as how I did all my wood, um, everything, framing, hatches, everything coated in oil-based exterior and interior of the actual boat, the aluminum boat, um, coated in that uh, Seahawk Alumahawk. And uh, I think it's time we go ahead and paint a hatch and let's do a step-by-step -step and I'll show you how I do it. So let me show you what I like to use. Um, this is how I did my entire boat. I prefer to use uh, door and, doors and cabinets. I get these, I believe at Lowe's, a 10 pack, four inch high density foam rollers. So it's a four inch little, I call it a zippy roller. Okay. And then I use one of these. You can see this has been used a lot. It's probably got half an inch worth of dried up paint inside of it. So it's, it's a little tray to accommodate my roller. Okay. I get, the, I get my little brushes at either Harbor Freight or this one. I got at Ollie's Bargain Barn. What do y'all know about that? 79 cent, baby. Okay. And so what I'm going to do with this brush is this is just a little cheap brush, but this is going to enable me to, uh, to get in to, to fine tune things. Um, I'm going to show you after I'm done a way that you could, uh, save these brushes and save these rollers to where if you're doing a whole build, you, you're not using a brush and a roller every single time you paint something. Um, if you set up as an assembly line and you get all of your decking ready and all of it sanded, ready to paint at the same time, obviously you could paint a whole lot of stuff at once. Um, I'm also going to use this Rust-Oleum oil-based enamel. I know that everybody, for the most part, knows about oil-based enamel and how it helps seal wood. Obviously, my wood's already sealed with fiberglass resin, but I'm going to go ahead and double up and use this for aesthetic purposes to give it some color okay before i paint this bad boy i'm going to have to prep it to prep it all i'm going to do is sand it i'm just going to sand it smooth 
It's going to do two things. It's going to make this smoother and it's going to give me a better paint finish, but it's also going to prep the surface to give that paint something to bind to, something to grip to. Okay, this fiberglass resin, um, as you can see, it looks very waxy, very hazy. It is. It feels smooth and waxy and that paint is not going to grip to this very well. So I'm going to go ahead and take a DeWalt palm sander and I'm going to use this Gator uh, 220 is what I like. 180 works just as good. 220 is just going to be a little bit finer scratch. Uh, I, I have no need to use 80 on this one, but I have before if there's any kind of runs or imperfections that I need to really just knock down, I'll go ahead and bust out the 80, hit it real quick, and then come back with a 180 or a 220. Um, if you if you stuck with 80, you've got you've got a couple issues. One is that 80 can burn through this resin and you could hit your wood and therefore you're losing your, uh, your, your sealer. Um, it also leaves deep scratches. So if you were to sand it with 80 and then paint over it, you're going to see your scratches from your 80 grit, um, through your paint job, even after multiple coats. So I always recommend 180, 220 when you sand this stuff. And uh, after a couple coats of paint, it should fill in those fine scratches and look really nice and smooth. It's all sanded. I hit it with the uh, sander and then I hand sanded the areas the sander couldn't get into. Um, it's going to be very dusty, guys, and you're going to smell that resin. I like to rinse it off with water and then give it a good wipe down um, afterwards. I'll wipe down all dry. And what I like about the fiberglass resin is when you sand it, you'll see now it's really, uh, it's really flat. It's got a matte finish. Um, obviously, if you see any shiny, that's resin that did not get sanded that's deep into the grain of the wood. Okay, so we're not going to worry about that. Um, I did sand my edges as well. You can't really tell from this shot, but I did sand those. And if you were going to wrap this in carpet, um, what I would do is on this back side, that's also coated in resin, I would definitely hit this with the 60 grit and then leave it as is. Okay, just a note, guys. I hit the 220, and it just wasn't doing it for me. And um, it's been a minute since I've done one of these hatches. I could have swore I used 220, but I went ahead and switched on over to 150. So at this point, I'll just recommend, which is maybe why this is empty, and I have so much of the uh, 220 over there, I'll just recommend using the 150. So um, go ahead and use the 150 on the fiberglass resin, and it'll set you up nicely. But at this point, this thing is ready for paint. The first thing I'm going to do is go ahead and take my paint and pour it in my tray, and then I'm going to... I'm going to hit my edges that I know I'm not going to get with my roller and I'm going to go on generously. Okay. So I'm just going to get in here and I'm going to do this and I'm going to go, I'm going to work my way around and then I'm going to roll it like so. And then we're going to get this nice and wet. Okay. I've got my hatch elevated on some cans. Okay. So I could work my way. I'm going to go across the top. I'm going to go around the sides. I may even zippy roll the sides, okay? I'm not applying a lot of pressure, guys. I'm letting the roller do the work. I want it to be a nice wet coat. And I also like to move quickly, okay? Just in case this stuff starts to get kind of tacky on me. We're going to do more than one coat. So I'm not striving for perfection and this paint actually is really good about leveling out leveling out on its own um, after you roll that initial coat um, i'm going to finish this up though first coat done and i'm going to show you how i store my brushes and rollers in between coats Alrighty, this is going to be a little bit of a challenge with one hand because uh for those that know or don't know some of you do. I film all my videos on my cell phone. So I got to do it all one-handed. I like to get this roller really wet. Okay, see how I just wetted it? All right, so it's nice and soaking wet. And then we're taking a grocery bag and I'm sticking it in there. And then I'm just going to roll this up in this bag and get it nice and tight. Okay. Maybe do a little twisty twisty. Just like that, 
nice and tight and then i'm just gonna lay it over here and that actually should stay wet and dude i've <laughs> I've left rollers and bags for months and come back and they were still wet. So just a little tip. I'm going to do the same deal with the brush, get it a little bit more wet, stick it in a bag, and then I could utilize it next time on the next coat. Also, guys, you could probably read the back of that can and it's going to tell you your cure time in between coats and what you need to do. I normally just uh, come back and check it. It's going to depend on the climate, um, the temperature, all that good stuff. All right, second coat is on. Um, with a lot of things in the Top Gun Jumbo, I usually went with two coats. If I saw some sort of an imperfection or a run, or if I felt that it just didn't cover well, then I would do three coats. Um, so two coats, we should be fine, but we're going to see how this dries up. All right, guys, brought it outside to show you how it looks in the sun. All cured, all dry, all set up. It is not tacky to the touch. So I'm going to call it done at two coats. Two nice wet coats should be good. I know I did I did three on some of my stuff, but it was just because there's flaws in the paint job or I went too thin in areas. So two nice wet coats should be good to go. Of course, it's got the fiberglass resin underneath it. Um, I did all my edges. I don't know if you guys can see that. So just overkill. But uh, two nice coats on this Rust-Oleum. And man, this Sunrise Red looks good. I like this color. This looks really cool. I think this will look sharp underneath the casting deck or on some framing. Guys, leave a comment. Let me know what you think about this color. Should I use it in my next build? Because I'm, I'm thinking about the next boat and uh, the color schematics of that. So y'all let me know what you think about this color, for real. Um, I think this will look mean with some charcoal gray carpet or maybe even some black. I don't know. So until next time, guys, thank you. That's it, guys. Thank you for watching. Hopefully, you were able to take something away from this video. I really try to dumb some things down and give an in-depth look at how I do my paint techniques. Um, guys, if you like what you see, all I ask is uh, please like the video. Subscribe to the channel. Um, that's really all that is necessary to support um, to support me and what I'm, what I'm trying to achieve here as far as grow my channel and keep producing content. The biggest thing you could do to show that you like what you see is just click like and subscribe. So thank you guys. Until the next one, I appreciate it. May your tiny boat bills be great.